Well, for more on what we're seeing, not only regionally, but also here at home, let's bring in Chris Conway from the Australian Stock Report. He's in our Melbourne studio. Chris, great to have you with us. Uh, now, I did just want to touch upon some of this commentary coming through from China when it relates to further lowering import tariffs, talking about uh, manufacturing sector, its services sector, um, saying that the door for opening up will get bigger and bigger. Now, this certainly would suggest that the trade war is on. China now responding pretty directly to U.S. President Donald Trump's uh, import trade tariffs. And would you say that, that, I mean, China looking to create big steps there, that door for opening up will get bigger and bigger? Good afternoon, Natalie. Look, I certainly think uh, undoubtedly it's a strong message uh, that Premier Xi is trying to send to the U.S. in light of obviously what the U.S. has done regarding, you know, steel tariffs and, and the like. Um, but at the moment it is just talk um, and there's been a lot of that from both sides. I don't doubt China's ability to further lower tariffs and promote trade. And it was certainly interesting to see, I think it was uh, last week, the European Union and China getting together and having talks regarding the steel tariffs that the U.S. had imposed. So. You know, look, there's a lot of posturing, there's a lot of commentary, um, it's a bold statement, it is in direct uh, response to what the US has done. And again, as I said, I don't ch doubt that China can do it, but it remains to be seen exactly what it will look like if, that po if and when that policy hits the ground. Mm, interesting to note, though, in the broader Asia region, we were just taking a look at the Hang Seng, the Nikkei, the Shanghai Composite, and we are, in fact, seeing weakness across those Asian bourses. We've got uh, Facebook fumbling, really, inspiring uh, that tech sell-off overnight. And this really also reflects what we've seen domestically at home, those weak leads coming through from Wall Street, uh, that tech tumble, really not proving much inspiration to, to traders domestically here either. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think today's uh, response to, as you rightly put it, a tech sell-off overnight is a symptom of, you know, something that's been happening more broadly, and that's that the entire world at the moment is very, very US-centric. Now, of course, that's because you've got Trump at the top tweeting away, uh, sparking trade wars, talking about tariffs, shuffling his crew through the White House. Um, but it seems like, you know, markets all around the globe are taking the direction from the US. It's likely to continue for the, for the foreseeable future, of course, as we have the FOMC this week. Uh, whether or not they raise rates is not really in doubt. It's more about whether the dot plot moves from three to four and what implications that might have for the world economy. So, yeah, not surprising to see that our market and regional markets are weaker today. You know, our market, we don't even really have a tech sector. So, you know, it's disappointing that we're following the US lead lower. But as I said, it's not surprising because everyone seems to be focused on what's going on in the US at the moment because whatever happens there will have a very large impact, as I said, on the global economy um, and how traders around the world will position in terms of risk. Mm, and as you mentioned, of course, we've got that giant risk event coming up this week, of course, the US Federal Reserve meeting. Uh, and this caution really does seem to be uh, presenting itself in terms of uncertainty around market direction. I'm interested to get your take, Chris, from, uh, I guess, a technical perspective, what you're seeing in the ASX 200 by means of you know, chart patterns right now. Sure. So there's a bit of a, a pennant pattern forming on the ASX 200 chart at the moment. Um, I don't know whether you've got a visual up there, but I can sort of explain it. We had that big sell-off uh, at the start of February when the Dow sunk uh, more than 1,000 points. The market was sitting at about 6,100 at that point, quickly sold off, on the fifth, uh, sold off into 5,800, creating a 300-point range. And ever since then, we've sort of just been oscillating in an ever narrower range, and that's forming the pointy end of that pennant pattern. Now, typically, these patterns, the theory books would tell us that uh, they're continuation patterns. So whatever market the direction came from, and obviously was bullish before this pattern formed, that's likely the direction the market will break out in. So as I said, theoretically at least, hopefully we move higher once this pennant pattern does break. But as I said, that's, again, it's really a technical indication, a technical symptom of the fact that there is a lot of uncertainty in markets at the moment, uh, you know, as I said, with those things emanating out of the US, which are negatives, I would say, all set against the backdrop of, uh, you know, an upswing in, 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 syn in synchronised global growth. So a few different forces pulling in opposite directions leaves traders and investors sitting there going, I don't really know what to do. And that's how we get this sort of sideways pattern that's formed on the ASX 200 chart. 
of course. Now let's just take a little bit of a look in terms of some of the headlines that we're watching today. Uh, Katmandu, uh, the, the phrase we've been using, ain't no mountain high enough, certainly when it comes to uh, the outdoor retailers' um, profits. No full year guidance offered yet though. No, no for your guidance. I think they did say that uh, the early part of the second quarter was looking quite good though, uh, with sales up around 7%, that's like for like sales, and margins growing as well. Um, but yeah, looking back over the last 12 months and even the last 24 months, you know, we know about the problems in, in the retail sector in general, and it's very much a matter of, you know, you have to find the companies that are doing well and are going to be able to weather this period of disruption. And even sometimes when it looks bad, these stocks end up you know, doing quite well. So one would be JB Hi-Fi, where everyone thought the onset of Amazon was going to decimate that stock. They reported quite well, and the share price has, uh, has firmed of late. Kathmandu is one that, as I said, over the last 12 and 24 months even, they've really righted the ship. Um, in terms of inventory, debt levels, and just manning, managing the business really well operationally. And that's led to uh, you know, a good set of numbers today. They weren't a surprise because they had pre-guided. Sales though, uh, sorry, sales revenue up 23% and sales growth up 4.6%, which I thought was a really, really strong number given, as I said, that difficult retail environment, particularly uh, in apparel. Mm, another number I know that you're liking uh, today, Chris Conway, is Aluka Resources. In fact, they've had uh, some pretty stellar numbers coming through, actually. Yeah, they did. Look, obviously, they were reported a while ago, and the share price has got a, a bump on the back of uh, on the back of those results. I just think this is a company that has, again, done an exceptional job of recovering from uh, a period where it wasn't strong at all. Again, they've righted things operationally. Uh, and then, you know, in doing so, they've managed to benefit from rising commodity prices. So at their, their last time out with their results, they paid down two thirds of their debt um, and their mineral sands revenue was up 40%. Um, as well as that, you know, they're a big player in that space. I think they control about a third of the mineral sands market or, you know, account for a third of the mineral sands market. So they're a big player that's perf performing really well operationally. Um, in an in a environment where commodity prices are on the rise, and I think that bodes well. As I said, the stock price has been running a bit of late, but I think there's some more to go on this one. Well, we are, in fact, going to be talking about the demand for battery minerals in WA a little bit later this hour. For now, Chris Conway, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thanks, Natalie. Have a great week.